I'm happy to announce that as of exactly this moment, we're releasing Claude 4 Opus and Claude 4 Sonnet on all of our relevant product surfaces. This is a straight upgrade. Everybody will just switch over from 3.7 to Sonnet 4 and pay the same price, get better intelligence. At the same cost and better intelligence, many customers are simply uh, uh, switching directly from one to the other. It actually does just as well as Opus on some of the uh, coding benchmarks. Dario understands that the super hacker will be the pivotal AI power going forward. I'm actually increasingly excited about the models for cybersecurity tasks. I mean, you can think of cybersecurity as like a, a, a subset of coding tasks, but they tend to be higher end coding tasks. And so I think we're maybe finally hitting the threshold for that. And then as a, as a former biologist, I'm, I'm always excited about use of the models for uh, for you know biomedical and kind of kind of kind of detailed uh, scientific research work, Opus in particular, I think, is going to be particularly particularly strong at that. Soon we'll be able to test Claude by connecting it to a polygraph. <laughs> yeah, oh, I love that idea. <laughs> Are you lying? <laughs> Who needs interpretability when we have the polygraph? Um. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense because, like, the training process is uniform, and you know, it, it, you know, you, you you would think that that it doesn't work that way, that it's all a rational process, but it's absolutely not. There's no point on the RL curve. They, they like just that, that they, no they come together. It comes together at the last minute. I don't know why. It's a real moment. Um, many people in the audience are developers here, and a question that I know has come up internally as people, you know, think about uh, how AI is developing is which parts of the software engineering job will AI take over, um, and what becomes more important in a world where we have autonomous agents being able to do, do a lot of software engineering. We're gradually going to more and more autonomy of the models, right? We had this phase where you would do basically autocomplete. Now there's this thing that I guess people have called vibe coding. That, then we're going more to kind of like you can dispatch the agents to, to do things. And I think with, with Claude Code, we're going to go more in the direction of, you know, you can dispatch the agents to do things, and I'm sure we'll have other product surfaces that, that, that allow you to do that as well. And I think we're, we're heading to a world where a human developer can kind of manage a fleet of agents and say, you go off and do this, you go off and do this, you go off and do that. But, but I think it, continued human involvement is going to be going to be important for the quality control to make sure they do the right things to get the details right. Dario assures us that the scaling laws are alive and well. I would say that, you know, the Claude 4 models embody advances in both pre-training and post-training. Um, so we're continuing to see the pre-training scaling laws work the way that they've worked before. Um, uh, and we're also continuing to see continued advances in uh, post-training. And, and they kind of they kind of complement each other, uh, and I, I think we're going to continue seeing advances in both of those. I think we're also going to continue to scale up. Dario Amodai's AGI is next year. Check him out. So we have these these multiple trends, these multiple sources of exponential growth, and they're they're all going to compound with each other, right? That's that's why I think all of this is going to go very fast. One of the reasons I liked Yega's blog post is that it was someone who was not me repeating the mantra of like, it's only going to be a year or two until, <laughs> until these things are like, you know, are, are basically peers to us. It's insane that 3.7 was just in February, right? It's, it feels like a year ago, but it was so just we, three months I, ago. I, I, I know it. I know it feels like it's like, oh, this is, this feels like an obsolete model or something. And, you know, it was, it was less than like two and a half months or something. It's like, the, the time scales are the time scales are compressing. I often say that uh, being in the AI field, I will go on a very brief digression. Be, be, being in the AI field, it feels like you're getting on a, a spaceship from leaving Earth at relativistic speeds. And uh, you know, one day you wake up, and you know, it's like you know, one day on your spaceship, two days on Earth. So you have to take in the news of two days. It accelerates one day on your spaceship, three days on Earth. And, 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 you know, that, that's, that's just what it feels like being, being on this ride. Uh, safety and, and capabilities are often, you know, uh, thought of as being at odds with each other. And your thesis is exactly the opposite and that these th two things can move in tandem. I found that very inspiring and one of the reasons I joined here. But maybe touch on how you think of, of Race to the Top. I think when we, when we talk to customers, we have a number of customers who care a lot about making sure that the behavior of their AI models is predictable, that it's trustworthy. I think that's aligned with what some of we're tr what, what we're trying to do in the long term for uh, you know, making sure that models in a more grand sense stay in line with human intent. First one man unicorn in 2026, and also try to catch Mike Krieger as he compresses 10 years of AI progress into one. Let's move into the five to 10 year time horizon. 
um, to the extent that that is even possible in AI as, as we move relativistically. Maybe relativistically, it's probably one year in real time. Um, when do you think there'll be the first billion dollar company with one human employee? 2026. I, I absolutely buy that. Remember this chart? This is what Anthropic is tracking. How long is the task that Claude can do before it starts to go crazy? Back in the day when I started, you could delegate maybe minutes of work to Claude 3. Claude 3, 7, meanwhile, could out work autonomously for about 45 minutes without losing its thread. And now we're breaking into hours of work that Claude can take on autonomously. My theory as to when the singularity will happen is when you will have a bunch of AIs doing stuff at speeds that you cannot comprehend and a depth that you cannot comprehend. Watch Mike describing this sci-fi scene of an AI doing all the work in parallel on many terminal windows at the same time. I've watched some of our most advanced coders run multiple copies of Claude code across multiple terminal windows. They're moving from just being engineers to being managers of several autonomous agents, tackling everything from simple coding tasks to complex full stack development projects across multiple code bases. Mike Krieger casually dropping that they are working on recursive self-improvement. We're also focused on what we call closing the loop. So Claude code is now helping build itself, and it demonstrates the power of self-improvement as it speeds up its own development. And if you're curious his numbers, here's a spoiler. Going from weeks to days, for me, that's a seven X. I think back to when I was building Instagram, our team was between two and six engineers you know, before we got acquired, and we were supporting two mobile platforms. We would have been able to produce prototypes in days and not weeks if we had agentic coding products like this. And to show you what's possible, I'm next going to hand the mic to Kat Wu from our product team. And this is where the presentation started to go downhill. You're going to hear Kat Wu, which is the human equivalent of plastic. She's using an IFB, like a, an ear teleprompter. And there's a lot of exciting news around Claude and Claude Co. But it was just painful to listen to her. If you want the definition of soulless and corporate, listen to this speech. Hi, everyone. I'm Kat Wu, product manager for Claude Code. As Mike mentioned, we recently launched Claude Code, our agentic coding tool, in research preview. As of today, Claude Code is generally available. And then this guy came on stage and he shared a bunch of very interesting technical details. Today, we're already helping developers build faster with resources like cookbooks and guides that show you how to implement features like memory into your applications. And then this Spanish-speaking GitHub bro came on stage and was very delighted. And I am here um, thrilled to be with you all. And he shared a bunch of actually exciting news, including how programmers will not program in the future. And a force multiplier for developers, augmenting their capabilities, not replacing, augmenting their capabilities and freeing them up to focus on what they do best, which is imagination and creativity. Part of being a software developer is being a wizard. So to close out the show, I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into Cloud4, our research direction, uh, and what developers can expect next from Anthropic. Um, so please help me welcome back to the stage, Dario, for our one-on-one -on -one conversation. Welcome back, Dario. Hello again. This is great. This is like our one-on-one -on -one in front of the whole uh, audience. This is great. <laughs> so this guy over here is Mike Krieger. And I love the guy. I don't know. Uh, I just got to feel the vibe. And here's my conspiracy theory. Random thought that you didn't ask for, but I'm going to say it anyways. Mike is so bright and fast and just on top of the whole thing. While Dario, did you also get the feeling that he's like stuttering the whole time? Like struggles to finish a sentence plus the hysterical laughing and I don't know. So here's my theory. That is the guy who's gonna build AGI. I hope you found this interesting and informative and hopefully I could save you one and a half hours of your time.